What up, nerds? A new episode of Stock Doc. Uh, a ticker I've talked about a, before in a couple of videos, uh, but one I felt like deserved uh, its own video. It was this company, Celsion, and a company I've been following for almost a year now, about nine months. And uh, you can see it has a 52-week high of... Um, I actually think it's closer to yeah, it's closer to seven dollars. I don't know why this graph looks like uh, it's five twenty six, but six fifty. Their lead product was a product called Thermodox. It was a chemo, a particle used for direct delivery uh, delivery into the liver uh, for liver cancer. And I I I wasn't that unimpressed with the data, but I think that it didn't meet its primary endpoint. Uh, for liver cancer, I wasn't even that excited about the product to be honest. Um, uh, but what I saw was the stock price crashed, and then not too long after that, I got an email uh, kind of showing some of the early phase results in one of their immunotherapies, uh, and it was pretty impressive. Um, so that is Gen One. Gen One is a uh, interleukin 12 product that's uh, delivered into the cells via a plasmid vector and uh, they have chosen ovarian cancer as an indication to develop the product in which I think was a uh, actually a, quite a challenge uh, uh, but uh, it, was, it was a very very aggressive move because ovarian cancer is actually not generally too sensitive to immunotherapy uh, you know typically lung bladder kidney cancer, uh, melanoma, other cancers of the skin, they tend to be the cancers that are sensitive to immunotherapy. So ovarian cancer is not particularly immunogenic, but they had a small study, and the limitation is the study is small, but they had, uh, I think, uh, 17 or so patients in each group, and they took ovarian cancer patients. The standard of care for uh, locally advanced ovarian cancers to give two chemotherapies, Taxol and Carboplatin. Uh, and uh, if they have a good response, go to surgery. R0 resection means that the surgeon gets everything they can see. Uh, so what they found is that uh, in this study the patients either received a conventional Taxol and Carboplatin or they got Taxol, Carboplatin, and Gen 1. And the groups that had um, taxol carboplatin and Gen 1 had an 82% uh, R0 resection rate. And the group that got conventional taxol and carboplatin only had a 58% R0 resection rate. So that suggests pretty significant. Again, it's, it, it's a small study, so they're going to have to replicate this data in a larger study. But that suggests a uh, significant benefit with the immunotherapy product. And they did get fast track uh, FDA designation for this, so this is a pretty big deal. But that the story doesn't end there for Celsius. I think the other exciting thing they have many many patents for next generation vaccines, uh, which uh, I think pretty much all vaccines that come out from uh, from now till uh, you know the next many many years are going to be DNA and RNA based. All kind of conspiracy theory. Maybe I'll get into it in another episode, but these DNA and RNA vaccines do not change your germline or uh, uh, DNA that you're born with. They send a, a signal for how to create a protein, uh, and, and they send that signal in either DNA or RNA. The immune system cells, uh, typically dendritic cells, uh, then create that protein instead of having to expensively make that in a lab. They show that on their surface to lymphocytes, and uh, the vaccine uh, becomes uh, quite effective at stimulating the immune system. So this company has that technology, uh, and, and probably the same platform they're using to make the ovarian cancer interleukin two or interleukin twelve uh, immunotherapy, and the vaccines is a DNA plasma delivery system. Uh, pretty fascinating stuff. They have many many uh, patents for vaccines uh, using this platform. They've got a bunch of cash 
Uh, I think they just kind of did a recent $15 million offering. It was one of two things. It was either a sign that uh, they're going to have to have some cash soon uh, and that that need for cash would come with some good news, or they just kind of said, F it, uh, no small cap biotech stocks are going up right now. If if the market's going to treat us this way, fine, we'll just <laughs> issue some more shares, which I couldn't really fault them uh, for that decision. I think the stock has uh, potential for, you know, you're looking at 105 million market cap, um, you know, future getting out of the small cap and into the mid cap range, that's $2 billion, so uh, you know, 20-fold minus some small dilution. It wouldn't surprise me at all to see this stock go 10, 15, 20 uh, bucks or higher. Uh, I think they've got a fantastic intellectual property. And the thing that I would add is that, uh, remember, ovarian cancer is not a very immunogenic cancer. But if this works in ovarian cancer, a high probability that it's going to work in other immunogenic cancers like lung, melanoma, kidney, bladder, skin. Um, lots of cancers are very sensitive to immunotherapy. So, you know, I could imagine this uh, being acquired or being pursued by other companies uh, uh, to pr pursue in combination with uh, Optivo, uh, uh, Keytruda. That's just pure speculation there. But, you know, they chose a really hard cancer to develop this product in, in, in and the data looks good. So, I really have high hopes for this company, and uh, uh, one of my top five biggest holdings, uh, I think it's number two for my mother, whose account I manage. Uh, good stuff, and big fan of this company, and uh, as you can see, Morningstar uh, also thinks it's way too cheap. Uh, they had a fair value on it at 243 today, so 40% discounted. All right, everybody, take care. hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit us up with messages and requests. Uh, Happy to, to look into any uh, stock requests in the small micro nano cap uh, healthcare area.